to know whether the given semiconductor is of n type or p type we have a good theory called all effect so by using all effect one can understand or one can decide whether the given material is of n type semiconductor or p type semiconductor suppose if this is a kind of material and if i have given it to you it is not possible to tell whether this material is of n type or p type so to know whether this is of n type or p type we have to do a certain practical and that is known as hall effect so now uh, the statement of hall effect is when a magnetic field is applied perpendicular to a current carrying conductor then there exists a potential difference between the opposite phases of a, a current carrying conductor potential difference means voltage suppose to understand this particular topic consider a current carrying in the form of rectangular shape so like this so of a b c d e f g h so now for this one if i apply the current in x direction there exists a magnetic field in z direction since both x and z directions are perpendicular uh, so that means we are applying magnetic field and current electric field in perpendicular direction then the opposite phases means the top end and bottom end are equipped with the positive charge and negative charge or if it is negative charge and this will be positive charge so automatically the two ends are charged with opposite charge carriers so there exists a potential difference so by setting that potential difference one can decide whether the material is of n type or p type so for that one <coughs> consider a rectangular current carrying conductor apply the electric field along x direction so consider this as x direction this is y direction and this is z direction so along the z direction you can have a magnetic field since along the x direction you can have a electric field and along z direction you can have magnetic field since both are perpendicular to each other so now whenever if this material is of n type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are electrons if it is p type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are holes suppose if it is of n type semiconductor most of the carriers are electrons so because of this uh, crossed or perpendicular electric field and magnetic field the force will act on the electron so the opposite phase is negatively charged automatically the opposite charge carriers will occupy the bottom end suppose if it is of p type semiconductor by applying electric cross electric field and magnetic field most of the force by using fleming left hand rule we can know the direction of force acting on the charge carriers so most of the charge carriers will if it is p type most of the force will occupy the opposite end the remaining electrons will come to the bottom end anyhow the between the two opposite ends there is a development of potential difference called vh hall voltage and the electric field between the two ends is a hall electric field so let us take the thickness of the specimen current carrying specimen is p and the width is d so this is d small d so now to know the direction of force acting on the uh, charge carriers so one has to use fleming left hand rule so now if this is if the four finger shows the current carrying direction the center finger shows the magnetic field direction the thumb shows the force acting on the charge carriers since the thumb shows the upward direction so the electrons so the electrons will occupy the upper half similarly opposite to that one the opposite charge carriers means the force will occupy the lower half so due to this one there exists a potential difference between the two opposite faces means the upper half upper part and lower part and the voltage is known as hall voltage and the electric field between the two opposite phases is known as hall electric field called as eh since the charge carriers are moving upwards there exists an uh, there is a upward force acting on the charge carriers that force is known as lorentz force and the lorentz force is uh, given by fl equals to q of vd cross b bar so where vd stands for drift velocity since the electrons are acquiring by applying the acquiring the velocity by applying the
current. So the velocity acquired by the electron by the application of electric field is known as drift velocity and the magnetic field acting on the charge carriers is B and the charge is Q. So now the force is given by this one. If you remove the cross product, you can write this as BQVD. So the magnitudes. Since if you remove the cross product, you can have a sine theta where theta is the angle between drift velocity and magnetic field. Since drift velocity is along y direction and the magnetic field is along z direction, the angle is 90 degrees. So, so 90 is 1, we can neglect that one. So call this as equation 1. So but because of this force, the charge carriers are moving from its rest position to the upper half and the lower half. So the force which is maintaining the electrons or holes to be there is given by FH or is nothing but QEH. Because of this electric field EH only, the electrons and holes are maintaining in the top, upper, upper part and the lower part. So the force acting on the charge carriers to maintain there only is nothing given by FH, FH is equals to QEH. So now at equilibrium condition, At equilibrium condition, equation all forces are equal, nothing but FL is equals to FH. So FL is uh, BQVD is equals to QEH. QQ will get cancelled and EH can be written as B of uh, VD. So call this as equation 1. Since EH is the Hall electric field, B is the magnetic field that we applied and VD is the drift velocity. As we know that the current density Z is defined as current per unit area can be given as in terms of drift velocity can be given as NQVD where N stands for number of charge carriers, Q is the type of charge, whether it is of uh, uh, electrons, if it is negative charge, holes, it is positive charge, and VD is your drift velocity. So we can write VD as Z by NQ. So now substitute the value of VD in equation 1. So equation 1 implies EH is equals to B of Z by NQ that implies EH is equals to 1 by NQ of Z into B. Since 1 by NQ is called as RH, nothing but Hall. coefficient. Since Rh is known as 1 by NQ or we are defining 1 by NQ as Rh, Hall coefficient, this factor can decide whether the material is of N type or P type, how we are going to see now. Suppose if Rh is negative, sir why it is negative or if it is positive, why it is positive, that's a doubt. Negative stands for Rh equals to 1 by NQ. If N stands for number of charge carriers, no doubt, it's a positive quantity. If Q, if the material is of n-type semiconductor, majority charge carriers are electrons. If my electrons charge is minus E, so then you can have RH as negative. So if RH is negative, the majority charge carriers are electrons. If majority charge carriers are electrons, then the material is of n-type semiconductor. Similarly, if P-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are holes, the holes charge is plus Q, plus E. So if it is plus E, RH is positive, if RH is positive, then the material is of uh, P-type semiconductor. So this is N-type and this is uh, P-type. So this is a theoretical concept, RH equals to 1 by NQ as theoretical concept. 
we don't know since n number of electrons lies inside the material q lies inside the material only so this is theoretical concept so we have to derive an equation in terms of known factors means practical wise so we have to write this equation like this since eh equals to rh into zb call this as equation 2 eh equals to rh into jb or rh is equals to eh by zb since z current density nothing but current per unit area i by a can be written as i by small d into t why we have to see so if this is a current carrying conductor in this direction x direction the electrons are flowing the current per unit area the current is i that we are applying i and area since the thickness is t small t and the breadth is t so the area of this particular phase is d into t that's why we can write this as i by dt and next we have eh whole electric field can be written as vh by d since vh whole voltage between the two phases and d is the distance between the two phases so substitute the value of j and eh in this particular equation 2 then rh equals to vh by d into i by dt into d so dd will get cancelled so finally you can have uh, rh equals to vht by ib so now since vh whole voltage so by keeping a multimeter on the two opposite faces one can know how much voltage we can have whether the uh, voltage is from top end to bottom and or bottom end to top end so it shows either plus symbol or minus symbol and t thickness is known factor vh is known factor i is a known factor current that we are applying d a known factor magnetic field that we are applying so now this is this equation that we don't know anything about the rh but in this equation we know or we can calculate the value of rh so if rh is positive so since t i b will never be negative vh if it is positive rh is positive then it is p type semiconductor if vh is negative rh is negative then it is n type semiconductor so by like this one can calculate whether the material is of n type or p type semiconductor so not only this we can calculate the mobility of the charge carriers also so how can we let's see suppose the conductivity of a material or the electrons can be given as sigma is equals to n q mu where mu stands for mobility so now we can write uh, mu as 1 by n q of sigma where 1 by n q is known as uh, r h of sigma then mu equals to sigma r h so like this one can calculate the mobility of the charge carriers so with how much ease the electrons and holes are moving in a per given semiconductor or a given material so like this one can calculate either conductivity of the materials or the mobility of the charge carriers so for electrons mu n mobility of the electrons so we have to take conductivity of electrons multiplied with the hall coefficient mu p mobility of holes so sigma p into rh like this one can calculate uh, the mobility of the carriers also. simply the applications of hall effect are whether we can know uh, whether we can we can calculate whether the material is of n type semiconductor or p type semiconductor and next uh, we can calculate the mobility of the charge carriers and we can also calculate the uh, applied mag suppose if you don't know the magnetic field how much we are applying so by using these factors and see we can write b as b equals to vht by i into rh or we can know the how much current that we are applying on a particular semiconductor so like this one can calculate the number of things by using uh, hall effect so hall effect is used to find out whether the material is of the major application is whether the material is of n type or t type
So one can one can also calculate the number of charge carriers in a semiconductor. So they're like this. So current density J equals to I by A can be written as NQVD. So I can be written as NQA into VD by cross multiplying. And VD, the value of VD is EH by B from equation 1. So EH equals to B by VD, B into VD, VD equals to EH by B. So now like this, and now rewrite this equation. N equals to IB by QA into EH, where A is nothing but area. Area of the specimen of particular phase can be given as length into width, nothing but D into T. So by my writing here dt, you can have eh. So finally, the value of n equals to ib by q dt eh. So all are known factors. I current b magnetic field, q charge, n type uh, minus e, p type plus e, d width, t thickness, eh is a all electric field. So by knowing all the factors, one can calculate number of charge carriers in a given semiconductor. We can rewrite the equation for B also. B equals to of uh, B equals to n q d t e h by i. So like that also, when one can calculate the applied magnetic field. So like this, one can calculate the number of charge carriers in a given semiconductor.